All right, so we're going to be talking about, uh, obviously, the reason you guys are here is about reading market structure to anticipate price direction changes. Now, we we all know about, um, you know, that there are patterns in the market. So, you know, when we talk about structure, what we're, what we're talking about is the way that the markets are built on a daily basis and then everything else that we know about the markets kind of hangs on this structure, okay? And, and this will make more sense to you in just a few minutes. So today we're going to talk about what market structure is. We're going to talk about its significance in our trading, um, how to utilize it effectively, the best technical indicators to use along with market structure analysis, and the best time frames to use. Okay, and I'm going to show you some potential trade setups and um, how to limit some of the potential disadvantages. Of, of using just market structure for uh, for your trading. I don't know how many of you have ever attempted to foresee the future using market structure, saying, well, I know when this happens, this always happens. All right, so uh, a lot of us have tried that during our trading careers, thinking, well, you know, if I just look at it long enough, I'm going to pick it up. And we do. I mean, people do. People. Some people are better than others at at uh, recognizing different patterns or structures. Uh, some people have to work at it really hard. Some people it comes naturally to. So, if you know what to look for, that's going to make it a whole lot easier to understand the structure of the market. Now, um, so we're going to define. Uh, market structure as the underlying framework, okay? Think of this whole thing as a framework, as the markets as a framework that defines the organizations and dynamics of a market, okay? So when we look at market structure, okay, we're closely examining price charts to identify key areas or components uh, such as uh, significant price levels or trends or support and resistance areas, you know, that the overall market context, right? So uh, these components uh, kind of form building blocks of market structure and, and provide us traders some valuable insight into the anatomy of the market. Uh, and this type of analysis is the, the foundation of an idea I had back in 2007, 2008, when I started, when I started to try to redefine myself as a trader and come up with something that would work better than anything else I had tried. Um, and ultimately, that uh, uh, defines the trading system that we trade today. And it all goes back to looking at and relating what's going on in the markets to the structure of the markets and understanding that structure. So I mentioned the word framework, which is exactly what we're looking at, just the like the framing of a house. By the way, my past history is as a contractor, so I always think in terms of construction or sports. Um, so when I when you look at the structure, you think about the structure of a house, the framing goes up and then you can kind of start to see what that house is going to look like. The framing isn't the house, right? It's not the house, but it's a point at which the shape is defined, um, where the personality of the house is starting to become defined. And then everything else becomes added to that. 
So you can almost immediately, when you look at the framing of a house, start to understand what is this house going to be like when it's finished, okay? Coincidentally, the framework for the stairs is exactly like the framework of the markets. You know, it allows for price moving up and down over time. Um, we can even define the stairs the same way as the markets. You know, you've got this, this longer term, okay? So if you're taking the longer term, is uh, if you're going to um, uh, define what you're doing here, is you're going to go from the bottom floor to the top step and from the top step to the bottom floor, right? So you're going to go up and then you're going to go down. And that's how we would describe the structure of the stairs in a longer term, okay? Now, in the short term, the stairs don't just go up, do they? In the shorter term, you're going to break it down into steps. So you go up and then you go sideways and then you go up and then it goes sideways and then it goes up and then it goes sideways. So have you ever seen a picture like this, a structure like this in the markets? Well, sure you have. Right? Sure you have. You see it every day. Every day. You see that structure in the markets. And if you don't believe me while I'm sitting here talking, I'd prefer you just pay attention, but maybe afterwards when you're watching this back on video, go pull up a chart, today's charts, of the most liquid futures instruments. That's what we trade. And tell me if you don't see this structure every single day. Now, we'll talk about time frames, okay? So time frames are also important, more important to some than others, okay? So market structure can take different forms, um, including, you know, the trending markets characterized by higher highs and higher lows and ranging markets that are going sideways. Um, but by understanding and interpreting the market structure, you can assess the overall market sentiment, okay? Recognize patterns and make informed trading decisions based on these structural dynamics that you're seeing. Now, when we talk about structure, it might make you think of price patterns, right? And the style of trading that relies on the reading of price patterns. You know, if you've studied price patterns on charts, they they may have seemed pretty compelling, right? That is, until you try to trade them. So that's that's a whole different story, right? So even though there is a pattern to market structure, we aren't just willy-dilly trying to trade chart patterns. Do you know anybody that's actually... And, and everybody's, there's always going to be that guy in the crowd. But do you know anybody that successfully trades just chart patterns like this? That they they see a, a pattern like this setting up and they, they know exactly which direction the market's going to go most of the time. Nobody knows all the time. Let me tell you my experience with that. For many years. Yeah, well, that's exactly the point. There are a lot of people. I'm the, I'm one of the few people that's going to stand right here out in front of everybody and say, it's kind of a bunch of crap, folks. Uh, these chart patterns uh, are great. They look great on a, on a chart like this. Um, and it looks like a lot of stuff that you could study and learn a whole lot about the markets from, right? Until you actually try to use them. Then what happens? It, it turns into a brutal lesson, right? So when I talk about market structure, you can't look at these and tell me precisely who is it that's creating these patterns. 
Who's doing this? Why are they doing this? What is happening during each pattern? What's the logic behind each one? And how do you know that logic is going to play out the next time and the next time and the next time and the next time? Okay? So these, these are not what I'm talking about, even though, again, pattern is important for structure. We can't, we can't necessarily expand on that just for the sake of looking for a quick and easy way. So we've got our long term, right? We want to go from bottom to top, top to bottom. Longer term trading, we might even classify this as investing. Um, you probably don't care as much about the dynamics of how the market got to where it is, just that it happened and that you can clearly see where the market move started and stopped, okay? How many turns it took to get there is really not on your radar of importance. The study of market fundamentals is probably more important to you. So you know what market fundamentals are, right? That's the that's you know when you're looking at the underlying financial data of a company um, or companies, um, you can look maybe at the cash flow or return on assets or capital management or you know it requires digging through financial statements. So if you're that type of a trader or investor you're not going to be as interested in the longer term type of market structure, even though there is a structure there. It's not going to be as useful. And now we go to a medium term. So let's say anything beyond day trading and short of investing. Um, so we're, lo we're still looking at the swing highs and swing lows over a specific time period. But again, the longer the time period, the more speculative the data that you have right now becomes because over time, many things change. So again, this may be helpful if you're a, a, you know, a swing trader maybe or something like that. You might find this somewhat helpful. But when we get into the granular data, this, for us, for us day traders, this is exactly what we need. And this is, we know how this happens. And we know why this happens. And we can see it happening if you know where to look. Now, this looks like a, this, this looks like a, a, a pattern that is repeating. And it is, but not for the sake of trying to trade a pattern. It's actually a series or a uh, or phases of a single thing, okay, that creates the structure of the market. And again, I have the proof I have for you of this is go open a chart, a time-based chart, particularly pre preferably a fast one like a minute chart. So. Sorry. All right. Uh, so what, what we're looking for specifically is this structure so that we can anticipate what is likely to happen next. Is there anything else you need to know to be a successful day trader? As far as you know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are not successful day traders yet. You're still working on becoming a successful day trader. And your mission is trying to make a lot of money when actually your mission should be Try to figure out what's about to happen next. That's all you need to know. The money is the byproduct of knowing that or of having a high probability of knowing that. We don't know it every day. Yesterday, trading, I was about break even. I, I was right half the time, wrong half the time. Um, well, I was never wrong, but the trades won half the time, lost half the time. Today, I was eight for eight. Is that right? Eight, seven, seven, eight for eight. Can't remember. Ask somebody in the trade room probably remembers. Um, so you just need to be right more than you're wrong to be successful. Okay. 
So we just looking for a high probability of something happening and happening in the near term. Okay. So now if we take this structure and we, and now we start to hang sheetrock on it, it really starts to take shape. We'll start hanging price action on this, on this structure and see what that looks like. When we start adding price action to the structure of the market that's been being created, and I'm going to show you in a minute how and why, we can better understand the, the buyer and seller dynamics that are going on inside each and every bar. And that way you can identify high probability trade setups. So we're looking at recognizing significant market levels and understanding those dynamics between the buyers and the sellers. So let's talk a bit about the smart money. So smart money, those, those are the people well, let's, let's let Investopedia explain smart, smart money. Insiders that are better informed typically invest more. Smart money can sometimes be spotted by greater than usual volume. Okay? If you've ever wondered why you watch volume, there's your reason especially when little or no public data exists to justify it. So those of you that are interested in day trading and have been watching uh, charts and sitting and you watch charts and you're just sitting there and nothing, it's just nothing It's going on. And all of a sudden, whammo, price just takes off in one direction or another. No news events, no, no reports came out, nothing. Price just takes off. And if you haven't noticed this, you need to stop trading because <laughs> this happens all the time. And this is what's happening. All right? I have better than that, Barbara. Actually, you already have them. You just have to know how to use them. Interesting question, though. I have begun to um, design something. Uh, it's, it's actually harder than it sounds, but I have, I, I'm, I've got the makings of a potential. So, I, and that's all I'm going to say about that at this point. Okay. Uh, it, this, the study of market structure, you know, it's funny. I, that's where all of this started, but I kind of forgot about the fact that that's kind of how all this started. You know, I started with, with looking at reversals or pullbacks. But it was actually the study of market structure that got me started on all of this. All right, so now that we know who the smart money is, they're the ones that can actually move the market and move it suddenly and quickly, okay? These, uh, these are the guys that invest in, they invest heavily in low latency trading infrastructure. Uh, they, they place their hosting computers next to the exchange or inside the exchanges. Um, they, that's to minimize any delays. They get their trades executed really fast. But a lot of people kind of like they poo poo these, these market makers because of the unfair advantages that they feel like they have. And, and they do, they do have advantages. Um, but without them, I couldn't trade. I'd, I'd have to stop trading. Uh, they do provide a good bit of liquidity. That's a, that's benefits all of us so they are allowed some allowances allowed allowances by the exchanges in exchange for liquidity okay now 
with some of these allowances, they're allowed to hide from us. But if we know what to look for, then we can better understand what the smart money is doing. And if we know what the smart money is doing, we kind of know what's going to happen next. Okay. We're going to, uh, you know, all, even though this, this event is largely about, you know, uh, smart money and volume and uh, market structure, uh, I'm going to show you a real telltale sign of, you know, the smart money manipulations. And it's about volume. It is about volume. But it's not the volume that most of you are watching. Okay? The volume that most of you are watching is total volume. And I used to watch it too because people told me I was supposed to watch it. But uh, I didn't really know what I was watching for other than there's a lot of volume. A lot of people are trading and I and they see a lot of volume buying and the price will go down. I'm like, okay, well, that didn't work. So, yes, I understand watching volume, but then I decided, is there a better way? Can we watch a particular type of volume? So that's what we do now. The market makers. What do you think they think happens when they take price and shoot it straight up or shoot it straight down? Why do you suppose they would do that? I know a lot of a lot of people think they're stop hunters and all that, and they don't they don't really give a crap about your stops. Um, they they have very they're very specific things that they do, and they do it the same way, which is why we have market structure. They do it the same way all the time, over and over and over and over and over again. Why? Because all of the rest of us act the same way over and over and over and over and over and over again. We are, we are predictable, and because of that, we are our own worst enemy. Now, okay, so I said, well, if you know what to watch for, if you know where they're operating, well, I'm, I'm definitely not going to jump in front of them, you know, and try to jump ahead of them. Uh, that's one way you'll get run over, and you try it if you've ever been run over by a by the big boys, by, by the market makers. It's no fun, is it? Or, you know, if you try to jump in there with them, you say, oh, there's a big boy. He's taking off. They, they're pushing the markets up. Or they're pushing the markets down, and that's you try to jump in there with them. Again, they know what they're going to do ahead of time. You're just trying to keep catch up. But if you know where to look, if you know where the telltale signs of smart money, knowing what they did and why, and this is what I'm, I'm working up to. This is what I'm going to tell you. It's not just about it's the, here's a, you know, a cup and saucer or cup and handle uh, chart pattern. So, you know, you should trade that. It's, it's not like that. This is, very specific ways that this structure is developed, okay? And if you know where to look, you'll know exactly what's happening. It, it, it was for the longest time, and, and I think for most traders, when you see these big moves out of nowhere, you feel like, well, if somebody in the matrix must have done this, you know, it's the markets are like the, the matrix. <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it's the not knowing where to look that keeps so many people out of the loop on what price is likely to do next. You know, most people are clueless. I was, you know, uh, are you? Do you know why it happens? Do you know what happens after it happens? Or do you at least have a high probability of knowing? To, to most of us, it's a huge mystery. I had decided at one point uh, that it was the matrix, that the market was the matrix and there was nobody really in charge, but there were people who knew how to, you know, work inside of it. 
but it's actually not the case. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the phases of smart money manipulation. Okay, there are four phases that build that market structure. Okay, the first one is accumulation. The next is the markup phase. Then we have the distribution phase and then the markdown phase. All right, so this was our previous market structure that we see all the time. Looks just like a set of stairs. There's a funny thing about a set of stairs. Each step is, it, it repeats at a regular interval, right? You don't have one step that's like three inches high and then one step that's like eight inches high and then one step that's three feet high and then, you know, they're generally speaking, they're pretty, they repeat pretty steadily. And, and that's exactly what you're going to see when you see this, this type of structure. And I, I'll, you'll better understand here why in just a few minutes. Now, this structure, this that you're seeing here, it's simplified. Okay. Uh, it is, it is a little bit oversimplified because these guys also know how to make it look messy, you know, make try to lead people away they they still want to hide what they're doing because the characteristics of what they're doing is they want to be very slow and stealthy you say wait a minute Tony you just said high volume really fast that's right that's how they do it that's not how they do the entire um all the phases of this single move okay they're going to start out with being very slow, very stealthy. It takes place in areas of congestion where you and I are sitting around going, what the heck? This is boring. We sat there in the room today for a couple of hours, I think. seemed like we were real busy real early, and then we got real slow, and then we got busier later. But, uh, yeah, it just gets so boring. There's no volume. Trading is in a range. Okay, so you might look at areas like this and consider them accumulation. Now, how do we know what they are? Personally, I don't care. I don't care what it is. I'm not trading it. And unless something happens after this range, I'm going to pretty much ignore this. I'm not getting ready for something. I'm not using this as a launching point to jump into a trade based on something like, you know, chart patterns. But it is the initial step of the phases. Okay, so there's, there's step one is accumulation. Okay, now we're going to go to the next step or the next phase. We're going to go to the markup phase. So this is going to be characterized by a series of, of higher lows and higher highs. <laughs> plus five, man. <laughs> Lots of plus fives on here. <clears throat> so this is going to be uh, uh, characterized by basically bars pushing up harder. Okay. Now, again, these guys want to do as little as possible. So they want to wait until there's relatively low volume. They're not going to throw out a whole bunch of volume, but they're going to wait until there's relatively low volume before they start tweaking with the market and making sure that price starts to go up. And then they're going to test that area a little bit. Okay. They're going to see, do these prices hold or, 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 or are they going to fall back a little bit? Are they, is it going to hold or is it going to fall back? So this is all done. This isn't some guy sitting at a computer. This is all done with algorithms. So price rising in stages, and it has a series of retracements and pullbacks, all right? So this is what the markup looks like. That's state phase two. Now they haven't made big money yet. These markups are not where they're making big money. So during the accumulation phase, they're trying to like corner the market on, on all of the available assets that are out there for the whatever instrument you're trading. So that's why it takes a while. They do it slowly. They do it stealthily. They don't want everybody knowing they're buying up all the stuff. 
So they do it real slow. And then they'll bump it up. And the price will bump up and they'll wait and watch and they'll wait and see, okay, how does, does it hold? Does it hold? Does it hold? And if it does, they're likely to do it again. All right. And, and it could be up to, I mean, in my experience, I've watched it. It's like three, sometimes hardly ever four times. All right. Now, now we get to where they're making money. All right, this is where the money now they're again, they're the majority holders of all of the assets that are available for this for this particular instrument, right? They hold they they've kind of cornered the market. So again, distribution just like accumulation is it's difficult for us to see or understand what is happening. Once again, things have gotten boring, just sitting there twiddling my thumbs. And the smart money, just as slowly as they were accumulating, starts to sell off the assets at this now higher price. Okay, so they've taken, they bought a bunch down here at the lower price. They're selling a bunch up here at the higher price, but not all of it. Because if you've given up control, you can't finish it and set it up for the next round, okay? So they haven't given it all up, but they're going to do it slowly and on relatively low volume, again, to keep the, you know, to not tip their hand. But again, if you know where to look, they're like big old giant footprints in the sand, okay? And they're going to always finish with an up thrust bar. Okay. So these will be characterized as up thrust bars. Again, I could go pull up charts, but you can do that. Tell me if you don't see this breaks out of a range, big up thrust bar. All right. And then. The final phase is the markdown. This is where they come in. They've already made their profits on, on, this, uh, on this part, okay? They made their profits in here, yet they're still going to control a bunch of the assets so that they can cause price to just plummet. We've all seen it. Okay, so what they do is they start to they wait until the the demand up here is starting to wane and they'll dump a whole bunch of uh, the asset back on the market. And what happens when you dump a bunch of an asset? They've already made enough money to a point where they could lose a lot on on that part of it. They're not trying to make money all the time. They just again, they want to make more than they lose. So they can just do that over and over and over again. And so they may lose some money on that, but they've already made the larger portion of their profits on this move. Does this make sense? Does this make sense now that you see this structure of what's going on in the markets? Now, when you look at it, oh yeah, I was supposed to do that. They dump all their assets and price goes goes plummeting down, okay? So now that you look at it, you can see here that this repeats over and over and over again. So where's the opportunity? Right? We're, we're all looking for opportunities. Well, again, remember, if I know what's likely, what's happening now, and I'm measuring every tick that's coming in, I can better understand what's likely to happen next. All right, so it's not a random, some random pattern. We have very specific patterns that are built very specific ways with very specific intent. 
Okay, it's not random chart patterns that nobody really knows what's happening. Okay, so in every one of these situations, we have a potential trade setup. All right, so now that you've seen some market structure and understand better how and why it develops, how are you going to use it? Do you need to be watching market structure every day to better understand what might happen next? I mean, it takes a lot of experience to just watch market structure and have a even a general idea of what to expect next. It takes a lot of years of sitting and staring at trading charts. Most people don't want to start out being a trader dedicating that type of time to learning something like that, okay? So you could do that, or we could just develop some tools to help with that. So I went through this whole explanation of the market structure, you know, so anybody can see it, and you can understand it, and you can use it any way you see fit, okay? It's a, it's a real skill. Like I said, it takes a lot of experience to watch the charts and understand everything that's going on. And you can do that for sure. And for some people, that's the right thing to do, you know. there There is a school of thought out there that you just read the charts and that's all you need. Okay, but if, tell you what, if as a contractor, whenever there was a, a new tool that I didn't have or it was available that would make me more efficient, that and would actually do a better job while making me more efficient and making me faster. I was all about that tool. I was all about getting a new tool that's going to make me more efficient and make me, <coughs> excuse me, make better, better decisions about how to go about building something. So this is what it looks like for us. Now you can say plus five. Hey, <laughs> Tag, this is what it looks like for us, all right? When we use the tools that are available to us, this is what we see to make our trade decisions. And we forget, even though we're reading market structure, we forget that this is exactly what we're doing every single day. We sit in the trade room and we get very, you know, comfortable and quiet and we, we're we watching market structure the whole day, but we kind of tend to forget that sometimes. So what can we do with market structure instead of just watching market structure? Well, how about if we watch, also watch and measure order flow and we watch and measure volume spread analysis and we watch and measure momentum and we watch and measure exhaustion, and we watch and measure divergence. That's what you're seeing here. And when we have a confluence of all of those events, we have something that looks like this. And when we have something that looks like this, we trade, we, we short it here. Okay? So, yes, we have the accumulation or distribution down here. Now, this structure may continue up, okay? This this bar may keep going. But remember, it's a series. We see it. this happen in a series, and it happens regularly, right? So indicators sure make things a lot easier and a lot more efficient. So let me show you. I think this was this was yesterday. Uh, I just grabbed one. I made this last night, so I just grabbed one trade from yesterday. I guess that's that on the NQ. So let's watch this this market move. I have it sped up a little bit. Let's watch the market move, and you know you can look at this here, and you can watch the market moving, and uh, try to anticipate 
that something is about to happen. You know, if not knowing anything about market structure or um, understanding why this this bar suddenly took off like this, this is where a lot of traders are jumping into the trade. Have you guys done that? Do you guys do you ever do that? You see price take off. I know I used to. You see price take off like that, and you're like, oh my god, there it goes. Everybody's in it but me. I got to get in this. So a lot of people got taken out right there. All right, so this is just looks like a typical day watching the charts, right? I mean, what? how would you know what to do here? So let's fast forward it, and let's now put some indicators on the charts. All right, so same thing on the left, but this time with indicators on the right. By the way, this is a trade setup here. Also, this was kind of coincidental. This this right here uh, was a short. We shorted this right here. So, so now see the bar moving up. Now look at the, all the indicators that tell us that a confluence of conditions exist that under these circumstances is likely to have price pull back at least a little bit over the short term. Okay. This is not one of our best examples. Our best ones go open here and drop straight down and keep going. And that happens. This is just one I grabbed from yesterday so that this was a fresh, uh, a fresh trade. There was, Several today, but I made this last night. All right. And that's what it looks like. That's our trade. Now, we're not looking to make a whole bunch of money on each trade. What we're looking for is an edge that we can exploit regularly. That's what you should be looking for as a trader. An edge. Quit trying to make a bunch of money. First, find out if you can be a winning trader. Find an edge and exploit that edge to the point where you can consistently end the day as a winner. Not a big winner. Five dollars. If you if you win five dollars. You made more than most people in trading that day. So these are the indicators that that we use. Okay, so and I and I said I was going to show you how we know that the big boys are doing something, right? And and that they're manipulating the market. So we're not just going to measure volume. See this little arrow right here. Man, I tell you what, there is a whole bunch of stuff going on inside this era. But we remove all of the information that you don't need for making decisions. And we just put this arrow on your screen for helping you make decisions. This is called our speed tick. Now, the speed tick is tracking what the big boys are doing. How do we do that? They're stealthy. They're quiet. They do. They try to hide. The one thing they can't do is they can't hide the speed at which. See, they can take a relatively low volume of, of contracts, but they can run them through really fast, right, because of the advantages that they're allowed through the exchanges. They can run them through really fast. So the one thing they can't control in order to get this to work is speed the rate at which the orders are being processed through the exchange. There's your big footprints in the sand. If we can track the speed at which the orders are being processed and we can figure out, okay, it's really unlikely that a whole bunch of retail traders all at once called each other on the phone and went, okay, ready, go now and push the button. 
pretty unlikely, right? So it must be a centralized computer, whatever, you know, the, the uh, algorithmic stuff uh, is doing that is creating this. And they're doing it for a specific reason. They're building the structure. And they're taking it through the phases of the structure. Now, all of this is structure too, right? But nothing happens specifically during this part or during this one bar pushing up. What does happen and, the, and what I was looking for was when price suddenly changed directions. There's an edge that was all I needed. And I kept seeing this repeating, channeling, price breaks out of a channel. We, these bars are much bigger than the bars back here. And it shoots up and then price opens and drops. If you don't believe me, <laughs> go look at your charts. And I hope tonight you look at that and go, holy cow, that guy was right. It happens all the time. So now we know what to look for. So now I'm reading every tick so I can see, okay, yeah, this is likely a manipulation. Now I want to factor in. Well, price is getting overbought. We know that price doesn't like to be overbought and people start getting a little funny about buying overbought assets. So they're like, now nah, I'm going to cool off here for a little bit. So prices gets overbought, and then it starts changing directions, okay? Pullback alert. Remember I said the volume spread analysis we like to use and, and that we, uh, um, we have a specific tool for measuring a specific type of volume. So we got inside this bar a specific type of volume that gave us more insight into the relationship between the buyers and the sellers at that exact moment. And when you know that exhaustion is likely because we have high momentum, this is our mometer. So this is, these bars have, are painted a different color. So we've got the uh, strong momentum. Momentum cannot be sustained. So as soon as we have strong momentum and then we're overbought, weakness is going to start setting in. And then we get the type of volume that shows that the buyers are, are getting uh, uh, really tired and the sellers are sitting up in here waiting and they're not tired. And then we get divergence on the open of this bar, which I, I, I probably do another uh, webinar event on divergence. Uh, I haven't done one in a while, but that's a whole hour's worth of talking about divergence. Basically, in divergence, when, you know, we have price moving this way, but momentum has changed directions, and that's what this 3D is telling us, the momentum, the price will almost always try to catch up with momentum. So when you take all of this along with this structure, man, you've got an incredible trading system that has a high probability of winning, okay? No, it's not going to win every time, but it's going to win a lot. And that's all we need to know. So we're measuring order flow along with price structure, volume spread analysis, momentum, exhaustion, and divergence, okay? Now, how do we actually trade it? How do we place the trades? What do the trade setups look like? How do what what indicators are we going to use? And how do those indicators work? And how do you use them all together? And do you use them all at once? Or do you okay? We're going to have all those answers for you on Saturday. Let me put this in the chat for you so you guys can register. I'll, I'll answer some questions today, too. Uh, you don't have to wait for Saturday. So there in the chat, 
is a registration for Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, where we will talk about all of those things along with price patterns and confluence, okay? So, yes, there's patterns, but there's a difference between structure and pattern. Patterns are somewhat random. Structure is what the market is built on. Okay? Any questions? Got a special offer for you guys. Uh, I had two emails today wanting to know what the special offer was. I already sent it off to them. Um, but here's the coupon code down here. You can go to our uh, website shop and get 20% off any of our programs. Uh, most of our traders that come to the trade room every day are in the Pro Trader program. If you want to start out a little slower, you certainly can. We also have the PayPal uh, Pay Later. I should have put that on this slide. The, we've been accepted to the PayPal program where you can pay it pay later. You have some options on how to, to go about paying for this. So you can spread it out over six months or whatever if you want to. So um, that's up to uh, you and PayPal. All right. Any questions? Thanks, Jim. Glad you liked it. Any questions? Anybody? I hit you with a lot. Thank you, Keith. Oh, hey, you got your sound working. Or you're just being very diligent. <laughs> Keith does a Keith. Keith is just one of our traders who is just the most helpful guy you'll ever meet, and I appreciate him. So uh, I hope that this was somewhat enlightening for you guys. Um, there's actually a whole lot more going. I, I, you know, for the sake of time, I had to simplify it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's, that's a good uh, term. But I, I simplified what's happening a lot. And I, I can go into more detail on Saturday. We're a little bit more relaxed on time on Saturday. You guys have all been working today and trading and, you know, it's been kind of contend to be a long day. So we want to kind of wrap up during the week, but on Saturday we're all kicked back and having our coffee and, uh, I'll, I'll uh, answer a whole bunch more questions and go into some deeper explanations on why things happen the way they're happening. So no questions? Great. I'm going to be seeing all of you guys in the trade room next week because you've decided you're going to join our little, our little uh, band of trading brothers and sisters. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you know I should I should promote that more. I tell you, I got to this slide last night, and I I flamed out. I got tired, and I <laughs> that's good enough. And I forgot to put some stuff on it. But thank you, Keith. Maybe I maybe you can start doing my my slideshows for me. Would that be good? Hey, Laura, Laura's one of our, our, I don't want to say old timers, long timers. Laura's been around for a long time. We appreciate you, you long timers and short timers. I'm old. <laughs> Honestly, you would have to be, Laura. You would have to be. You've been around for so long. We started this in 2009, and you must have joined us in, what, 2004? 12, maybe. I'm just guessing. I know you've been around a while. Still come to the tra trade room every day. Gee, you think this might work? You know, that's the thing that, that I get where people are like, well, what if it doesn't work? I'm like, you know, I've got people that have been coming to the trade room for 12 years, and they come every day. You think they'd keep coming if it didn't work? Uh, we're going to get, uh, if you look at, um, Ken, did you see that 
uh, that Keith put in that link for the uh, results page. If you look at that, and David, that's also uh, a good page for you to go to, that one that uh, Keith put up. Scroll up to where it says intentionaltrader.com slash results. Those results were just uh, calculated uh, the other day, and, uh, and we posted them up on the website. And we actually did a little email and sent, sent it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty dang good. And that's what our, that's what we get, you know, our trade room traders, uh, have been coming for many, many years and we have lots of new people. We have lots of people that have been doing it for a long time. So, uh, you know, give us a shot, give us a try. We'd be happy to help you any way we can. Uh, uh, send me an email, Ricky. I don't think it does, but show, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, send me an email. I may have to create a different one for you. Um, that particular one is just for the programs. But, uh, I mean, I'm I'm happy to, to work with you. Again, I was late last night doing this, so I, I could have set it up wrong. All right. Well, it was a uh, sure a pleasure talking with you all. Uh, I really look forward to uh, awesome Wayne. Looking forward to it. You're from you're you're from the back side of the world, aren't you? Back the back side down under. <laughs> We have a lot of Australian traders. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. Uh, uh, hope to see you either in the trade room tomorrow or next week. And definitely want to see you all on Saturday. No excuses. A lot more good stuff on Saturday. All right, everybody, have a great uh, rest of your day. Bye-bye now.